gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, it is me, Duke CT, here live. Yes, this is a live show. Talking wrestling, talking things, and all that crazy stuff. Here live on Dixie Live. That was, by the way, the song you just heard was Sonic Too Hot. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 remix by No Tux, Sky High, Sky Chase Jones from OCRemix.com. Listen to most of this stuff. You can find this stuff on OCRemix.com. Great music, and honestly, a lot better what's going on today uh, um, on the music scene right now. But that's just my personal opinion. How are you doing, people? And i uh, got guests, too, in the chat. And if you're on the chat, don't worry. You can put the chat stuff there. It's nice. Talk to me on the chat if you can't call in. Remember, if you want to call into the show live, of uh, you know, and um, join me there. The phone number, as always, is 724-444-7444. Once again, the phone number is 724-444-7444. And the call ID to connect to me, Duke CT, is 92417. Once again, the call ID is 92417. And you can join in the conversation. You can have a nice little, nice little chat. Because, hey, this is what we have here on the Duke CT Lounge. And if you can't listen to us live, why why don't you listen to us live? It's a great show. You can always, you can always, always find this show on iTunes. Not only on iTunes, but also on YouTube.com slash Duke CT and on vid.me slash Duke CT. All right. Let's get this show started. And what are we going to be talking about? Well, let's talk a little about Total Nonstop Action. Why are we talking about Total Nonstop Action, you might ask? Well, uh, they did some, uh, something stupid happened again. It just, it still happens at this point. It, it just, you wonder why this, co- this company is still going on. It's amazing. So, Last couple of weeks, in this September, this month alone, you have GFW, according to SI.com, was hemorrhaging funds. And their anthem was ready to withdraw from the wrestling industry and everything else they were thinking about, um, you know, leaving the company. That supposedly, um, there was no, you know, supposedly, that was not going to be the case. Not at all. In fact, ladies and gentlemen, they're, they're buying in. According to an, in, an interview from um, Ed Norham for himself, said that he was going in more into uh, Impact Wrestling, GFW, what it was. They're going to buy. They're like, okay, let's go in GFW. We're going to do all this stuff. You know, We're going to have our own network and everything else. We're going to have our own network. That was their play. But then something happened. Their network... Well, guess what happened? Network didn't show up as well. In fact, it was, you know, supposedly this huge network. Um, yeah, <laughs> it didn't go well. Supposedly, the um, the network was um, got released early. In fact, it got released so early that it wasn't even meant to get out. In fact, and supposedly people who are uh, who uh, supposedly. Um, you know, they were like, okay, we're trying to fix our sites. And so all this the impact and all the great memories and everything else on the uh, website, it, <laughs> guess what? They, it was launched too early, and now they were like, okay, we have to shut it down. Seriously, it was a complete and total uh, crap show. It was just <laughs> uh, right here, according to PW Insider, right here the article, and the link will be in the description as well. That's all the links about this show here. Is that Global Force, the Global Wrestling Network launched last night, and it, you know, it was on September. It was not, uh, it was like two weeks ago, and no videos here. Thank goodness I got ad block. Get ad block, people. Just don't want to deal with that stuff. Anyway, it was Global Wrestling Network, and guess what? Um, it wasn't really. There was supposedly was going to launch, but it didn't. It said what happened was GFW made the service lies that they were tweaking the infrastructure, making it possible whoever who visited the site to begin streaming and watching all of the content for free. And it was not really meant to be a public launch in any way. In fact, they were working by prepping the site for launch. And, yes, and they, you know, wow, it's this company can't really make any decisions. It just looked like it was the supposedly second best 
uh, this is supposed to be the number two wrestling promotion in the world that can't really handle their own uh, online server. Like, okay, this thing, they couldn't hide their online server behind a wall or anything else? I mean, lower tier indies know how to do this. The, I mean, lower tier indies get, get together and they make, like, okay, in the streaming site, they make it work. And they can't get this right. And even better, they're still tell you know they're gonna do a whole Hall of Fame ceremony and such, which they, I don't know who's gonna be about the whole um, Hall of Fame ceremony, which is gonna be just delightful. Oh, I can't wait to see that. That's gonna be a. And then now we get to now, ladies and gentlemen. So this month of September has been really bad, but guess what? It got worse. It got whole lot worse. According to 411mania.com, <laughs> uh, gosh, according to 411mania.com, you will not believe this, ladies and gentlemen. Um, oh, it says we have to make an account um, to, um, can, to get, you, you, you can just call in, you can guess two or three. You don't need to make an account here. Um, it's, and by the way, it's free. So, uh, to talk to you, it's free. You're not going to worry about cookies or anything else like that. So it's fine. If you, you need to make an account to call in, um, I don't think so. You can do it for your touchstone phone, just call in and you can, um, you know, connect like that. So don't worry about that, about making an account. Anyway, back to the story. Um, <clears throat> and b- get back to the fail here. Get back into the fail, because there's a lot of fail here. And as we noted, it says, quote, this was, this was this week, actually. I can't believe this happened this week. <laughs> it's just like every week in September, things just kept getting worse for this company. <laughs> Monday, says, quote right here, Impact Wrestling issues a press stations on their location of Bound for Glory, and was which was mis- mysteriously missing the GFW name. PW Insider reports that Anthem Media has dropped the Global Force Wrestling name and is referring to coming yet again as Impact Wrestling. And the reason why is this, it was reported this month that Jeff Jarrett was taking a leave of absence from the promotion, and Anthem may not own the GFW name. This is because the merger between the two, mo- two promotions hadn't actually finished. I want to repeat that again. The supposed merger of GFW which was basically a bunch of house shows they taped with, well, over three years ago. And by the way, if you watch some of the stuff for GFW Amped, if you, they, they actually would, you know, they had to redub the audio and everything else. Just to say, yeah, Bobby Roode, he was so big and popular at NXT, but he's come back here to Global, Global Force Wrestling, even though it was like three years ago. BS, man. That is... They're trying to hop so hard on that WE bandwagon. It's pathetic. It is truly, you want to talk about pathetic, ladies and gentlemen. Impact Wrestling is the most pathetic, and I do mean pathetic, wrestling organization I've seen, and that, that's saying something. And, and it says, <laughs> and even better, it says, it's possible that the GFW name will be gone, soon gone completely. Uh, it may be a separate name that Jeff Jarrett himself could run could use to run GFW events his own. And Anthem is, and, and even better, Anthem has been doing the whole pay-per-views. They have been doing GFW Amped. TV footage that was un, was filmed but not aired. So they have a ton of this GFW Amped footage. Which, by the way, I don't know who's watching that. I don't know who is sitting in and buying this on pay-per-view. I don't know. I, I don't know that what the numbers are, but they're probably really low. And... I sit and I wonder, should I even try to get this uh, video for this review? But then again, I don't want to do that because I heard the, the, the snippets I heard. The uh, commentary is not that good. And I don't want to watch something that is just that terrible. I don't want to watch that. But yeah, GFW, Impact Wrestling, everything else has gone to crap. I don't know what to say anymore about this company. It's that they continue to survive when they just need to die with aspects. Why is this company still existing? That's my question uh, to you. How is this company, who has taken so many L's, that 
honestly, even the Cleveland Browns hang their head and just be just you shake their head at them. How is this company still exist? I don't know how someone conned them to basically own this wrestling thing. You know what? And and even better, they're expecting they're going to do Bound for Glory. It's going to be live in um in, in Ontario, Canada. They have to move Impact to from Florida, in Orlando, Florida, to uh, can, to Canada to cut the cost down. And they're going to do these blocks of TV tapings. They're only going to expect in a two thousand eight in a twenty eight hundred arena, basically around. Hopefully, they get five hundred people. Yes, they hope to get 500 people for a national televised audience. And it's shown all across the world, all these types of places, and they expect only 500 people to show up. That is sad. And even better, they expect at least, you know, a little bit lower for the TV taping, which is going to be filmed block and block and block, which is just, I, I don't get this about this company. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> they got deep pockets. Deep pockets, Gestry. I don't think so at this point. They, I mean, Anthem must have deep pockets because they're not making any money on it. You don't make them not making any money at all. They have no money. To, they, it is a. It just completely takes everything away from them. All of it. I am... You have to just be, it is amazing. And I'll say this again. It is amazing how this company is still alive, still around for all these years. <laughs> you know, and I think uh, Matthew from Botchamania said this on Twitter. And I'll put this on the video uh, thing if I can find it. And if you do on the video version of this podcast, I will put it up. He basically said this. I'm gonna see if I can find this anymore. I'm gonna see if I can find this 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 tweet. I think it's somewhere on the forum here. Um, I, you see, where is it? Because um, where is it? Because he said something very witty, and it actually makes so much sense. Um, let's see, where is it? Let me see. Money puts it away. How does this, this happen? Yada yada yada. Ah, here it is. And and I quote, after watching Narcos, I assume every wrestling company is a money, money laundering front. You know what? I've watched that show, too. It kind of just makes sense. Hell, if you know what the AWF, uh, uh, I believe, uh, that was pretty much used for, you know, some money laundering as well. <laughs> Jesus. Wow. <laughs> oh, hello. Hello. Uh, hi, Duke. Ah, uh, who is this? <laughs> it's Enzy. Oh, Enzy, how you doing? I'm good. Oh, that's good. You know, it's NG from the CCS uh, stuff. Uh, how are you doing? Hopefully you're having a good time here listening to me ramble about stuff that you probably <laughs> don't care about, but yeah. No, no, I like listening to you. Ah, uh, well, anyway, it seems that even, you know, I just, you know, it's, it's funny because, again... I just look at this uh, company, and I, I do. I, I want to really root for it, but more often than not, it seems that they not only can't get themselves out of their own way, it just um, <laughs> they just seem just to relish being in this position. I mean, what are your thoughts on this as someone who's an outsider at this point, um, hearing my rants and everything about this uh, company and everything? What are your thoughts? Well, I think it's kind of fascinating that, they, as you said, they're still a thing, but it's, they must have a hold on somebody to be able to keep uh, doing this thing or to keep getting away with it. Well, they, you know, I think they have at least someone talk to. I mean, at this point, um, heck, when it was owned by, it's like a big company, Panda Energy. It was mm-hmm. supposed. It was pretty much, uh, <laughs> um, you know, uh, supposedly used as a bling tax shelter and keeping away the uh, owner of the company, Dixie Carter. Just like you know, she wasn't the best uh, Carter, the best of the Carter family. She just doesn't know. She was like in way over her head. So like, okay, just keep her away from the big important stuff. You have this little wrestling thing. Just stay here. 
don't drain us of any money. In fact, it was so bad that they just had to just, you know, they had to cut, you know, was a, basically had to cut budget and everything. And it was because she was listening to people like um, Eric Bischoff and Hulk Hogan, who basically big, important stars, but they don't really, they, they, they well, kind of push the whole TNA should be going touring and that that pushed her way too fast, too soon. And then they became back into the red again, back into debt and then back into just becoming more and more relevant. And then they had to get rid of the company, you know, uh, Penn energy, uh, Dick Carter sold the company off to Anthem. And now Anthem is looking to basically dump the whole product at this point. And I predicted this. I knew this was going to come. I didn't think it was going to come this quickly because just they took over. Anthem took over in March of this year. In March, and it's September. And now, JC, just this is amazing. I've never seen this before. Of a company just like and like after several months, just completely just say we're out, we're done. People want to say about other companies and anything else that's not doing so well. I just, just I can just point them to Impact Wrestling and our TNA, our GFW, or what do they call it? I can just point to them and say this, and like you can't really complain. You want to talk about bad the DCU is and the DC Universe movie universe is? At least they get their movies on time. At least they actually bring a profit. GFW hasn't seen a profit in many years and such, man. And yeah, man, it's crazy. It's this company is a I wouldn't even say a laughing stock because at this point, uh, they, people just don't care about it. it. I actually watched the show uh, tonight. Actually, I watched okay. a little bit of the show uh, Impact Wrestling, and guess what? They still have the same stuff here. Uh, bad story, uh, bad you know, evil company takeovers, which they have been doing to death since the the entire thing has started. They just evil like, oh, another evil company coming in and taking over. Even though they've done that storyline every other year. And and piped in crowd noise. You haven't lived to hear you haven't lived, NG, if you haven't heard, seen a like a pump piped in crowd noise. It's so blatant that you can see the people in there cheering and you can just hear these like boo there people are in the science cheering and everything else chanting, and they're just you, and and the, and the sound, the audio is like, boo! It's it's so fake. It's so funny. I, oh, it's it's probably like wow. <laughs> ah, but yeah, but you know this is um, it is what it is at this point. So Impact Wrestling, at at this point, I, I'm I'm betting. You know, they're gonna, it's going to be on YouTube, and it's not. I I guarantee even CCS is probably Cesar Cat Studios. I know I'm probably you know plugging them. I don't care. I <laughs> bet they're going to probably uh, get more views than them. In fact, I think YouTube Saints and a good show. Yeah, I was on like you know uh, last night. They're going to have more than them. Heck, you know, I shows like Jontron or uh, you know, they, he's going to get more views than him. Uh, Game Grumps definitely. You know, I can just keep naming other YouTubers and um, and everything else to probably have more views and probably have more advertising. Hell, what culture, after that huge explosion of what culture, will still have more gravitas in that arena than anything with Impact Wrestling. So that will tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. So, um, yeah, uh, that's the uh, part of the show. We're going to talk about that. And I'm um, going to take a small break. Thank you, Angie, for joining me, by the way. No problem. All right, I got the, uh, you know, you can still hang out in the chat, so don't worry. I'm just going to, um, you know, get the, uh, you know, unless you want to hang out, you know, still because I'm about to play a song right quick, so. Yeah, no worries. I got my switch on. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for being here. And that's Angie's. Say bye. Bye. <laughs> All right. And there we are. There we go. And that's like, you know, that, hey, you never know who's going to be in the Duke City Lounge, ladies and gentlemen. And what we'll be playing here. We're going to play a little bit of, you know what? Since DuckTales is coming back, let's play a little Apollo Duck from OC Remix. I know you're going to love this song. So go ahead, people. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the music. Here, live 
on the Duke CT Lounge. Thank you so much for listening to me, Duke CT. We're right back right after this. CT. We got guest four, guest three. We had NG the last time here. Hopefully, everything is going to be okay and all that good stuff here. And, well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, let us sit down and listen to the words of my voice. Listen to the words of the Duke CT Lounge. Thank you so much for joining me as well. Well, so good people listen to words. Ah, yes. Jinder Mahal, Jinder, Jinder, Jinder Mahal. Oh, Jinder Mahal, what a tangle web he has riven since becoming the WWE champion. He has, well, not exactly set the world on fire. But according to some people, I think uh, NWO Wolfpack TV on Twitter. Uh, and such, it says he's actually drawing a little bit more house shows than when WWE cha- when AJ Styles was WWE champion. So, uh, okay, fine. So let's look at this. Uh, but yet, fine. Jinder Mahal is not doing well. I mean, he's doing pretty decently in the ring. I think he's done well. He's showing confidence. He's loving himself um, and trying to be more of a hero to his people in India. Which, by the way, here's my question the WWE, and I didn't mind gender, and I like his whole heel stuff. I think he's getting better at it. But my question, I think most people have a question before we get into the craziness here, is that why turn him into a villain? Heck, when you look at some of his stuff off you know, on YouTube or anything else, when you're working out and all this type of stuff, he seems much as a baby face there. Why not push him as a baby face? Why not? It would be very interesting to have someone like him be a baby face and uh actually connect to the crowd that way. Why not? He did have some type of connection when he did 3MB, so why not have him win a couple matches on, you know, that sort of thing, on SmackDown and and that sort of stuff. Have him really do something important. And while I agree that he was rushed to the WWE title scene, seriously, he was really rushed in. And honestly, I think he should have been winning matches. I think he should have won more matches and got more connection with the crowd, of course, and then start building himself up. Uh, I think maybe you know maybe uh, a U.S. title run. Maybe at the end of the day, by the end of the year he should have won the U.S. I think honestly he should have won the U.S. the U.S. championship against um, AJ Styles. Like at, at near end of the year in the SummerSlam with the help of the Singh brothers, he wins the United States title, makes the India India title or something like that. Right there, if you want to keep continue with the villain slash heel route. But they didn't do that. They just pushed him right in front of that and beat Randy Orton for becoming the WWE champion. And he had some uh, decent matches here and there. He had a pretty good stuff with Randy Orton, besides that whole, oh, gosh, the Punjabi prison. I, gosh, that 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 whole match, that 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 match needs to go. The, the concept is cool, but man, that that needs to go. That was just a terrible match overall. You understand, people? It was just there. Oh, by the way, guest four is up there. We have, um, you know, uh, guest three NG here. So, hey, how you doing? How y'all doing? How you doing? Okay, let's see what else here. Um, and um, 
by the way, if you want to call in. Remember, people, uh, to call into the show is to see right here in the chat room. Remember, the chat room's on lock. If you want to call in, you, you know, want to call into the show, remember the number is 724-444-7444. Let's get the number is 724-444-7444. And the call ID to connect me, Duke CT, is 92417. Let's get the call ID is 92417. But now let's get into the topic at hand. Jinder Mahal has been going off and talking this stuff, you know, the heel stuff, yada, 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 you know, I'm better and everything else. In the last couple of weeks, his promos have been a little culturally insensitive, to say the least, to Shinsuke Nakamura, his his opponent um, coming at Hell in a Cell. He says, you know, a couple very, you know, he made fun of his faces and such. And I was like, okay, that's actually a pretty decent promo. I'm like, okay. Then he went a little too well as the crowd, the wrestling crowd, chanting too far because, well, he went to talked about the, the Japanese stereotypes and saying, well, and I'm quoting here, so don't call me a racist or anything else. He says, um, all look same, instead of all look same, and such like that, and that broken English. Um, yeah, and the crowd chanted, that's too far. Yep, a pro wrestling crowd Chanted, that's too far. How have we come by in 2017? Wow. And, and funny enough, it got to a point, ladies and gentlemen, you had you had the uh, Washington Post uh, right here. Let me just get the link here of, you know, you know, oh, yeah, you know, here it is. Oh, uh, yeah. And by the way, the picture is, by the way, says a thousand words. I will be, uh, yeah, his whole audience. Oh, boy. Oh, gosh. I will put the video up here. Let's see. Jenna's Mahal's audience. Oh, gosh. This was, this this right here. Look, at this is all tarped down. The audience, it, it looks like a house. This looks like something TNA used to, We will remember in total nonstop action at Dark Crowd. This is sad. This is the WWE champion on SmackDown, a nationwide television show, ladies and gentlemen. This is a televised, national, a national televised show on the USA Network that gets an average of 2.3 million people watching. And look at this picture. Look at it. No one's there. Nobody. It's no one. Ugh. Just, yeah, that sort of thing. It's just so bad. Terrible. That's a, this, then again, that's another issue coming in in this uh, in the WWE world nowadays. You know, that's a big issue. But then, yeah, uh, yeah, that's a little. This looks really terrible. You know, but yet here it is, the Washington Post article, and here it is. But yet, here it is. Early lead by Marissa Payne. Um, right here. It says, quote, The WWE champion, Gina Mahal, looked every bit the dastly pro wrestler Thursday, Tuesday night striking an imposing six-foot-five figure in a tan suit and a black turn, bellowing insults on his rival fan favorite, Shinsuke Nakamura. Smiling sadly, however, the mood changed for some at the Oracle Arena at, oh, in Oakland, California. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this took place in Oakland, California. Like, <laughs> I honestly think this should be on uh, another show or something like that. You know, like, you know, maybe on YouTube Saints or anything else, but that would be interesting. But yeah, he said, quote, right here, this is my whole, it says, you always look the same. Again, quoting, not saying the words, so YouTube, don't demonetize it. I'm just quoting the story. In fact, here it is, the quote right there. I'll put a picture right there of the quote that I'm not saying I'm not racist, that sort of thing. And even got even better. Same quote, they call you Mr. Miyagi, later returned to Japanese character Karate Kid. And, yeah, they all laughed. Yeah, they all this type of stuff. And the audience didn't quite know how to respond. And supposedly... The, the spectators were saying, this racist, and the crowd said, that's too far. And 15-year-old Nayuman Fayez 
said, quote here, in the email, saying, WWE should have never approved this. And uh, it says, and he actually added a bit left a bad taste in the audience's mouth. So racism is definitely an idiotic way to get heat, and it's not necessary. And he was 15 years old. He, he's 15 years old. He's been watching the programming for since 10 years, 10 plus years. So he's one of those people. He's a lifer, ladies and gentlemen. 15 years old, he's already in. I love it. I love that, ladies and gentlemen. That's beautiful. And it says um, racism is. It's just like it says. Quote: Racism is definitely an idiotic way to get heat, and not necessary. It, says, it also makes the writers look bad. More than, and, you know, I wish I could talk to him and says, make the writers look bad. What do you think the writers, you know, the, the writing's been good so far? Uh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. But, yeah, a lot of people on the Twitter verse says, quote, Thomas J.K. says, who are those writing General Mahal's promo? They are just, just tasteful and racist. Are not impressed that we short this out. Said Mar- Mary Mark's po- married Mark's podcast. This is the Twitter and such. So take a shot. <laughs> says, Sorry, folks, we are not watching SmackDown any longer this evening. We should be ashamed of their racist writing. Hashtag that's too far. The Bay follower so it says, "Quote, hey," and all caps saying, "Hey, ha- hey, We having a brown person say openly racist rhetoric does not make it okay." Scroll Duggery. I don't understand at W's angle by letting them all cut uninterrupted racist promos. You want your championship comes to discuss? And finally, uh, Zombie Muse, Cerceris, uh, I hope I'm probably mispronouncing the person's name, says, uh, the entire general whole racist storyline is disgusting. I'm fine with Hill Heat, but racism should not be a cheap plot device. Do better, WE. And, but yet, not everyone was enraged, including like I think it was like Fernando Peldia, thirty-three, who was an an audience on Tuesday. Um, he was there. He says, "Quote: I'm a longtime wrestling fan, and I just saw it as a as a show at a phone interview. Knowing as a Latino, he was happy to see two minorities vying for the WWE top title. And he said that he took the chance as more routine heckling of a heel or bad guy, and not offended at the reaction." He also said the diverse crowd around him didn't seem uncomfortable when we hit Mahal's words either, because that's kind of what you expect from WE. He says, uh, and also, quote, some of it's kind of cringeworthy, and towards the to the mid 2000s, the trio of Mexican wrestlers with the very branded Mexicals riding out of the ring on lawnmowers. Subtle. And, says, and they continued on. Um, they actually got Dave Meltzer. Money melts in this conversation. It says, quote, wrestling was always in this little world. Now everyone watch it, and you can't get away with those kind of old tricks. The fan base will blame it on the company and not the heel. It's an embarrassing thing for the WWE, which called, he called it really bad television because it made me feel more sympathetic for Hall for having delivered the uninspiring lines. Nobody wants to be called a racist. Yeah, and pretty much true. That's pretty much truth right there. Oh, we got a call from uh, Texas. Hello. Southeast Texas. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Don't be calling out my number and stuff like that. Mm-mm. I'm just listening. <laughs> well, you just want a phone call? You just want to listen, all right? Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Don't be calling out my number and stuff. These folks will be trying to steal my identity. <laughs> I'm not calling your number out, man. Um, don't worry, yo. I won't be that man, bro. Don't trust me. I got life. Uh, I got life locked and life <laughs> alert. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay, man. All, All senior right. citizens must have life alert. I think I'm getting trolled here, ladies and gentlemen. Do you think I'm getting trolled? Probably, I am. No. Uh, mm 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 mm. <laughs> what you call my mama? What? Oh wow! Well. The, the the um insanity of live tele- the live radio show. You get everything here. All right, and I think you're about to back up into something. So I'm gonna let you go. All right? <laughs> no, no, don't let me go, please, please hold on. Don't let me go. The ship is going down. You're gonna be playing the violins while the ship go down. Please don't let me go. Hold on, please. Oh man, this this is getting real. Awkward. But anyway, um. 
Anything to say about the story about Jinder Mahal, sir? Anything? Who? Who? I don't know all these folks. See, you, you, you let the folks' identities and stuff out. I don't know nothing about know who. What you say his name is? Okay. All right. Well, I'm letting uh, you go. Uh, have uh, a nice no, night, sir. No, don't let me go. He sounds like a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> okay. All right. Mm-hmm. Good night, sir. And he ain't racist. He ain't racist. He's the uh, uh, what 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 does JBL always call him? He the he the Grand Taj Mahal, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, man. Right. Yeah, uh huh. He the he the modern modern something. I don't know how to spell modern all day Maserata. The modern day Maserata. Uh, don't, don't you be calling that man's mama no Maserata. Ooh, what kind of show is this? Ooh, next thing you know, you gonna have white folks on here. Too late. <laughs> Too late. Oh Lord Jesus. Ooh, he's oh Lord. Okay, sir. Have a nice night. All right. Oh, okay. oh, oh. What you mean, have a nice night? You done told me white folks is in here. Oh Lord, I got to move. I got to call the welfare office and make sure they ain't stole my stamps. Okay, well I gotta go continue the story. All right, have a nice night, sir. Have a nice night. No, no, no. You know you don't want to let me go, don't you? Let me go. Let go. <laughs> Never let go. Too late. That uh, was fun. Yes, you are, Angie. Yes, you are. Okay. But, yeah, that was a good distraction, huh? Live radio, everyone. You know what? I might actually put that on because why not? Because, hey, I have nothing else to do. But, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to put that up there. Anyway, um, let's see. The whole, let's see, though, you talk about the whole Kogan situation, uh, about him, you know, uh, about you know black people as this, that, and the other, and the third, and they already said um, this company quote. Here it is. Oh, here is our this statement, ladies and gentlemen, that will help change everything. It says W embraces the controversy. It says quote W is committed to embracing and celebrating individuals from all backgrounds. It is demonstrated by the diversity of our employees, performers, and fans worldwide. I think it's just that's just their basically a pamphlet they just put in there just so there it is done this celebration however didn't always translate the ring as Tuesday as the article continues many of that um, may have do a history of the industry so as um, Meltzer quotes says the foreign heel goes way back uh, to 1900s or so so it's not anything new it's easy it kind of works when you do it the right way Villains slash heels would play on the ethnicity, and, and you go as far as you could. I don't want to say wrestling was built on it, but it, it was a big, big part of wrestling in decades. Decades, yes, the foreign heel, the fear of the other, that sort of thing. The fear of the other coming in and taking your jobs and taking everything else. Ooh, boogie, boogie, boogie. But yeah, but here's the interesting here about you know there was actually an article about how well they actually did um uh. 2009 New Japan Pro Wrestling used Nazi imagery for some of its promotional, you know, the whole thing. And I'll put the the Twitter thing here about the poster called Dominion. And well, Japanese culture is pretty different about the Nazi stuff there. So yeah, but yeah, it posted it at the time was they were got people got upset, so they changed it and redesigned it. And now, well. You know, this is um, a very interesting... You know, this article goes into a more stuff here. Um, it says uh, right here, a uh, quote, uh, talk about Black Lives Matter, talk about the mo- uh, Black Lives Movement, uh, the Charles O'Reilly, all this other stuff. And it says, quote, uh, Meltzer talks about this. Says, quote, people are different. The product is different and society is different. You look at stuff that was done 15 to 20 years ago in the large center of love it and you say you go you can't do you could never do that now i see this reaction as another as to why they'd be careful very careful not to do it again oh uh, yeah and this is the other 
com after the WWE says, just like many other TV shows or movies, WWE creates programming for fictional personalities. And, um, you know, incorporates real world issues and stuff and subjects. But do you trust the WWE to do that, ladies and gentlemen? Probably not. Uh, this is a show, quite honestly, WWE is, oh, you don't trust it. I don't trust uh, a show for the WWE to do this type of uh, very serious stuff. The Orville, you know, recently aired, and they had a very stuff about, like, uh, transgenderism and, you know, that sort of thing. And they yeah, kind of made a Mr. Mark there. I think that show should have, that's it to me, that's a later episode season because we're not really familiar with this crew yet. I think that show, that should have been a season two or a season three episode when we got more related to the crew and everything. That was way too serious for the show that just came back and forth. That's a little too much. But when, like I said, when TV shows do and do not, they fail in that aspect and serialized television. WE is that rotating circus and everything. And while there are serialized televised events that like televelas, like say in Lucha Underground, I don't see WWE doing something like this. I don't see them doing something like this because the WWE, they can't do regular stories right. They can't do anything good right. Because what does Sensei Nakamura do after all of that? He didn't rush out and beat the crap out of gender. He just said, oh, he talks stuff. I'm not going to do anything to new mer- no mercy. No, you should have gone out there and beat the crap out of him. You know, it used to be ABC. A, the, the person, you know, the, the challenge stands up and everything else. If I didn't appeal to something really dumb or say something like the heel or villain does something incendiary and builds and this builds and the bay face keeps, they keep fighting back all the articles and then, you know, the, the hero beats up the uh, the villain and then the, and then they pin them and then they become champion or they win the match. This and funny thing is, ladies and gentlemen, this is not the first time W had this type of storyline. You had Triple H versus Booker T, and well, Triple H said some very offhanded comments, or racist comments, and then after all of that, Booker T. And it's all. And honestly, he did get the championship moment eventually. He got pinned, and not only beat, um, like he spent a minute on the ground at the pedigree, and he didn't kick out. Oh man, wow! I was like, damn, that show. That was, yeah. I didn't start. I watched. I know they gave him the Intercontinental Title as a second. Like, oh, it's a little. It's a. It's a. It, it was like a. Honestly, it felt like a. You know. You know, it's just a, uh, you know, it's a, uh, it's just a, uh, the, the booby prize. And I know Booker T was considered retirement, so they didn't want to drop the title, but he changed his mind. So yeah, <sighs> but you know, I don't trust WWE to do these type of uh, storylines. I don't trust them. They barely could do anything else right. What makes you think they can do anything wrong? So yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we are we are here right now talk about that so it is what it is anyway um <laughs> that's the show ladies and gentlemen what a wacky show it was a wacky show that was ladies and gentlemen so um hopefully that was um entertaining and that's what i want to do i want to be entertaining ladies and gentlemen and that is the main goal to show a little information a little fun a little excitement that's what a live radio show, live podcast can give you. And with that, I say do. And we will meet again next week, next Thursday night, and hopefully maybe TNA will actually have some good news coming down the pike. Or maybe not. Or whatever they're going to be called next week. Anyway, Duke CT here. Peace and love. I will see y'all when I see y'all. Later. <laughs>